you have from in sense if you notice there's a world around to not if you are thinking you can do whatever you want to do there is only one thing that i know is true about existence you may think that it's common it's not so common sense that we're dealing with oh hello there hi everyone episode seven everybody what is Ooh. going on look at the crowd out there already hyped up they've got their signs in the air they got their lighters flowing like it's a concert i don't know what's going <laughs> on out there but i'm excited oh i think someone's trying to throw their their panties on stage oh my right now. goodness they threw them at you even they didn't even throw them at me uh welcome in everybody it's episode seven we're still here you haven't gotten rid of us yet uh Thank you for being here. If you're watching us live here on the uh, the Twitch channel, welcome in, guys. We appreciate each and every one of you being here. We see you out there. We love you all. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you're listening to us on the podcast, driving down the road, look out. There's a bird. Also, thank you for that as well because we appreciate it. Guys, we are officially on. <laughs> We're basically on every podcast station imaginable that people listen to. <laughs> We We're are. waiting on one. <laughs> We're waiting on one. And I won't I won't say who it is, uh, but their initials are Pandora. And as soon as we get on that, uh, we will be on every single podcast station out there. So we're excited. I can't wait. You guys have been incredible. Sky, how's your day been? What's uh, what's happening? It's been good. It's been good. Um, the kid was off from school today because I had a little bit of a situation. So I don't know if you guys ever dealt with this with children. I'm pretty sure it's pretty common. I looked it up, whatever the case may be. Normally, I wouldn't do something like this, and I would just take him to the doctor just in case. But I saw a little wart on his hand, and I just had no idea what to do. Like, I was like, I, I don't know if I should take him to the doctor, if I should let him go to school. Like, I didn't want to be bothered with any of this stuff. Adulting. Right. You know, right. <laughs> like, Man, sometimes adulting is just the worst. It's just the absolute freaking worst. You know what I figured out it is about adulting that I hate? It's not mm. having to do the things. I understand basic life. What you got to do, you got to live. Yeah. Gotta, sorry, I had the hiccups. You got to be able to <laughs> to go out and do your your daily things you got to do. That's fine. For me, the issue with it is nobody else on the planet knows how to do their job correctly <laughs> no they don't and that's so, that was the issue the workload ends up being even harder on us because we have to end up trying to do their job for them exactly nobody knows how the fuck they're doing nobody knows how to adult they Not adults don't know how to adult and i just i laugh now now that like i'm older because everyone's in such a rush to grow up and we're just like well they, we think when we're younger that once you reach an age of like adulthood, you all of a sudden know infinite wisdom. That's mm -hmm. fucking a whole crack of shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nobody know e until the day we die, all the way up until like in our hundreds, nineties, eighties, whenever we decide to go. It's just we don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Like but I said, on. like I said a couple episodes ago, we're just potatoes as babies, and we grow <laughs> up learning from other potatoes exactly and nobody knows what they're doing so Bunch yeah i'm glad uh so you you took him to the to the urgent care is that what you said no so i called his doctor um okay. right called after he doctor. got out of school so i called his doctor he gets out of school like around two the doctor's office closes at five and it's like right down the block for me so i was like let me call them in and find out if this is something that's emergency worthy because again in new york things are still congested over here people are still dealing with covid mm -hmm. the protocols and things like that so right now i don't want to bring him somewhere that's unnecessary and right. put ourselves in that like you know environment and whatnot oh so, you mean using common sense all right gotcha. yeah you know <laughs> so i call over and i'm i'm asking the the secretary i guess the assistants whatever she is you know, I, I tell her the situation and I ask her if she thinks I should come in or not, if it's something that is warranting a visit. And she said, well, that's if you want to bring them in, then you can. That's, mm. that's what I'm trying to figure out is if I should. 
Like, do I want to? No, nobody wants to. Should I? What kind of answer yeah. is that? That's like taking your car to the to the mechanic and saying, "Should I change my oil?" And they're like, eh, "If you want to." Well, no, either it needs changed or it doesn't. That's not an answer. So, like, I I ask her. I said, "Well, I need to know if this is something that's contagious because he's got school tomorrow." And mm -hmm. I don't want to bring him to school with this on his hand um, because what I'm reading is that it is extremely contagious and I should I should keep him home. And like, I just want to be I just want to be sure he's a kid. It's on his hands. He touches everything like right. just, the So <laughs> she says to me, she's like, well, I don't think they are contagious. Let me just find out just one second. Puts me on hold. Talks to, I guess, the doctor, then comes back and she's like, yeah, we don't think they're contagious. I'm going to need something more than we don't think they're contagious. Like, I'm sending my kid into a school. Send him into school. Like, we'll tell him to slap a few people <laughs> around. If they get warts on their face, then you know. <laughs> so, like, I didn't really think anything of it. I was just like, you know what? As, just in case, let me just keep him home tomorrow. Get some, like, of that over-the-counter medicine and just put it on him and then send him to school on Friday and call it a fucking day. Like, the nurse knows. I called her. They didn't call me back. I was like, this is what's going on. He, ain't, he doesn't have COVID. Yeah, they're not <laughs> going to call you back. No, they haven't called me back. So he's just going to go to school tomorrow. If they send him home, they send him home. I'm like, I'm at that point where it's just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, what am I going to do about it? I can't do shit about it. So No, you can't. I mean, no, I don't know. I'm... I don't have a kid. I wouldn't have a clue as to yeah, how to I mean, that the, situation. I could, take, I could just take them to the doctor anyway for them to just charge my insurance company for them to be like, this is nothing to worry about. Just go to Walgreens and get so-and-so. So I'm, I'm like... Let me do this first, and if it doesn't if it doesn't help him, then I'll take him to the doctor. It's not like well, anything bad, but you could tell. It's from what I can tell, uh, and and this is the only thing I know to be factually true about life in general, like fully a hundred percent true, is that uh, apple cider vinegar is the cure for everything. I've I've put that on him. That's actually one of the things that we had to do. I did that with aloe vera, and then I ended up getting him like these little these children wart bandages things that you put mm -hmm. on them. So he's got that on right now while he sleeps, and then I just take it off in the morning. Okay, well, I mean, I don't know. I just know every time, every time I look up anything on the internet, it's always apple cider vinegar this, apple cider vinegar that. What is in Listen, apple cider vinegar that's making it so insane? The apples in it. <laughs> An apple a day keeps the doctor <laughs> away. Maybe they're It's they're the way wrong. that it's processed and, like, the, the acidic the ph levels of it like it just it really does cleanse i used to use apple cider vinegar for everything okay Literally so for everything. I, I for a while i was doing i was taking shots of so apple cider vinegar every mm -hmm. day um apparently you're supposed to dilute it with water when you do that because the the acid is so strong it can like oh i never did i yeah, did either, but, yeah. you know what i did i just turned the bottle up i just <laughs> big swig of it okay i couldn't do that because the ones that i used had like the unfiltered yeah that's like, what so i use like i just shake it real okay. good yeah i can't do that like it has I just to be a shook shot it up, just... you know did the you who <laughs> hit the bottom of the glass bottle move you know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> <Yep>. and <laughs> took it up and then just took a big swig of it every night before bed oh it's, my it's God. good it fights against cancer it fights it fights against everything literally everything yeah. It's good for your uh, skin. But yeah, you should uh, you should probably dilute it with dilute water it. if you do that because yeah. it's not a good for your throat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I used to do that. They actually have the drinks too. They have apple cider vinegar drinks that I actually really like. I forget who makes it. I want to say it's like Mother's Best or something. It's like that really that well known brand that's like all over the place. Right. But they actually have drinks like pomegranate ones and grape juice ones, and, and they're really really good. I used to drink one a day. Really? Yeah. I should look into that. I need to do something. I'm still taking the one a day vitamins that we talked about. Guys, look at that. We're already making a difference in someone's life. I know. Be that it's it's law, but you know, it's still a difference in right. someone. Right. Might just be keeping me around one more day longer in life. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what it's doing? <laughs> uh but yeah, that's uh that's a not terrible day, but an annoying day, it sounds like yeah, that you had. A it bit. was just it was just a little irritating, but, you know, we lived. We lived. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I didn't do much today. I got ill earlier, and uh, <laughs> I'm feeling much better now. I uh, I am 
I struggle a little bit with like blood pressure and uh and my blood sugar. It kind of goes up and down. I'm not diabetic, but I'm I'm something. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm definitely something. Uh but it uh it kind of attacked me earlier and we were actually talking, doing some work on the show and stuff when it happened and uh mm -hmm. and I had to just I had to go lay down is what had to happen. I had to go lay down for about an hour and try to shake it off and now I feel good. So uh as soon as I finish this cup of coffee I'm on, I'll probably have a problem again. But <laughs> we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Other than that, my day's been good. It's been uh, one of those adulting days that we talked about. I had to go to the grocery store, had to go get a bunch of chicken. I've been making chicken in the air fryer like crazy. And so good. Oh my gosh. Anything oh in the air fryer goodness. is just good, but oh, some chicken, some steak. Some I fish. season it and and. Uh, what's it called when you leave it in stuff? Marinate. I marinate it for <laughs> like days at a time in the in like olive oil and seasoning and garlic and all this other stuff. Uh, and then when I fry it up in the air fryer, it comes out as the just juiciest, delicious piece of chicken you've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been addicted to that lately. Uh, and then I chop it up, throw it on a tortilla, and make it unhealthy. <laughs> you know, throw some sauce, some cheese on it, some some tomatillo sauce, which uh, I turned you on to this week. Yes, you did. That was actually delicious. I don't know why I've never eaten it. I just think, like, the way that it looked was just off-putting to me for some odd reason, which is very odd because I love eating green things. Like, it's just... I don't. I don't know what it was about it. I know you don't. You really should. <laughs> like, right. Well, I'm taking a one a day. I'm healthy, right? <laughs> is that all healthy. I need? It is hoping. So I haven't I taken hope. it in a few days, to be honest with you. Oh, my God. You just said you've been taking it. I know. I know. How uh, dare you? Well, I went. I had a big weekend. I went. That's I was in a right. wedding this past That's weekend. Right. And let me tell you, it was awesome. They spared no expense on the photography and videography. I, like, I felt like I was in a movie shoot. It was mm -hmm. so cool. They did. We did interviews and all this crazy stuff it was so much fun uh two of my really good friends got married i was a groomsman in the wedding uh big congratulations to them and uh, it was a lot of fun thank you so much for having me be a part of that uh if you're listening you know who you are uh but thank you guys i absolutely uh, uh had a blast it was it was really cool that's awesome that's yeah awesome. so what's happening in the world today sky what is happening in the world indeed? So just an update. I know if you guys have been listening uh, recently to our previous episodes, we have been following the Gabby Bryan. Um, Petito? Uh, yeah, the Gabby Petito uh, <laughs> case. I was going to say that both of them, but never yeah. mind. Um, so far, there really isn't that much news to report on that. Um, they did finally say that it was strangulation was the cause of her of her demise um mm -hmm. and they are still trying to find him they can't find him anywhere in the the nature reserve they uh dog the bounty hunter <laughs> decided that right. he is no longer going to be assisting at the moment because he had injured his ankle um so there's that uh well. i did also hear recently that um the neighbors have allowed the media to post in their their yard and then there's the speculation of is he did he flee to Mexico? Um, is he living under the house? Because apparently the mother had seen somebody had seen the mother reaching down by the porch and a hand came out from underneath where the lattice is and blahzy blahzy blah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of speculation going on about like where he is. His family is getting death threats, which people like I understand <clears> that you guys think that. Sometimes the family has a lot to do with what's going on, but there's also times that the family has no idea what truly is going on. And as hard as that may like be like be able to process, don't go attacking the family for yeah. a mistake that a person has done. Like that's that's not on the family. I it really is. I could not agree more with that. Like I, I get it. Like I truly, truly get it. But like at the same time, like nobody knows all the facts. Nobody knows what's going right. on. Nobody like really truly knows all the details. They can't if you, if you want to be upset details. at the family, wait until the case is closed and we know their involvement. 
Correct. Honestly. Exactly. Like uh, you can't just make speculation. Can't be mad at him on speculations. You can, but exactly. it's a very non common sense way to live your life. Precisely. And, uh it's it's just one of those things where, you know, they they may not know. Uh, we don't know what happened when the ra- relationship with between him and her there could have been so much more to it that that led up to what happened and and there's just so much unknown about it but we're doing our best to keep you guys updated as we get information i know uh uh john walsh the guy who uh hosted america's most wanted Mm-hmm. Uh, he believes that, and he knows a lot about this stuff, but he's pretty positive in his belief that uh, Brian has uh, fled to Mexico. Okay. that's Yeah, that's what I was hearing. Yeah. And he even said that he's like, he could run across the border naked with his hair on fire and nobody would notice. Yeah. He said there's plenty of places to do that. So yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I would imagine that he probably did leave the country. I don't know what he would gain from staying in the country, honestly. Absolutely but, nothing. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully they, they catch him because it's it's pretty obvious that he's he's definitely involved in, a, in some sort of way. But yeah. uh, I don't especially, know. Especially because I do remember them saying that um, the, the reports did say that they did find out that it was like uh, her body was like three or four weeks past before okay. they found her. Yeah. So it was, there was a long period of time. And then there's a whole bunch of other things where like the timelines just don't match. Right. And things like that. So, I mean, like he knew for a while that he had to save up and get his, his stuff in order, his eggs mm-hmm. in the basket before he did anything. So, yeah. yeah. They, the family just wants closure, dude. Like, if you're listening, I doubt you are, but the family just wants closure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he, I, he, I feel like, I feel like he's definitely listening. What else he's is totally there to do listening. when you're sitting in the woods by yourself, <laughs> other than listen to the Not So Common Sense podcast? Of course, maybe he's trying to get some common he sense. He might be trying to, like, to, you know, figure out what to do. I mean, like, bro, if you're in Mexico, be in fucking Mexico, but just call and just fucking give this family some fucking closure, man. Right. And just, Go on living your fucking life on an island, fucking swimming with the goddamn dolphins. I hope you get eaten by a shark, but what the fuck ever. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you something that, uh, and I said something that didn't have common sense. <laughs> uh, and that was a, uh, my, my article's not pulling up for me right now. My internet uh, kind of hates me, but <laughs> luckily I uh, kind of read over all of it earlier. Uh I just don't know where it took place. If you have it and can let us know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. But I found a story. uh, I think it was just a couple days ago. There's there was this bull elk that (laughs) I'm guessing as a baby. I'm guessing as a baby, this is when this happened. uh, It somehow got a and I assume it was from a tire swing. It got a tire around its neck like it put its head through and it was it was wearing this tire for like like a necklace well it turns out they saw that somebody had saw this and when it happened and they never could get to the deer it was very skittish and stayed away from from people Mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. two years later they have just caught that that buck this that that bull bull elk this week they finally caught it and got that tire off of its neck it was still around his it it had grown to where it literally like fit around his neck and it was crazy could you imagine just carrying around this extra weight for two years tires are not light (laughs) they are not uh, and, they um, said it didn't seem to stun its growth or anything. It seemed like it lived a normal life, just had a tire around its neck, so that's good. But they finally caught it and got the tire off of it. Uh, they had to cut the tire off because its antlers had grown. Yeah. <laughs> so its, it's, its antlers were way too big. And there's a picture of this this beautiful little little guy 
was yeah. it around his neck? Yeah, uh, this is. did happen in Colorado Mountains, Colorado, is, okay, Colorado Park. Uh, okay. and <laughs> like, what if he was like the coolest little elk in like all of like the park? And well, they studied his patterns for like two did years, they, really? they tried to catch him for like two years. He That's was awesome. very, uh, they said he would disappear, uh, at the same time of year. Uh, for <laughs> long periods of time throughout the years, each year he would disappear completely. They don't know where he would go, but he would disappear, and then he would come back during certain Aww. seasons, and and was just living his life with his tire around his neck, and they just never could catch him. But they finally—I don't know how they did it. They finally caught him. They tranked him. They they found the mark, and then they tranked him. Mm. Uh, what they didn't do, though, however, um, I did just read this. They couldn't slip it. They couldn't slip the tire over um the neck they didn't cut it so what they did was they actually cut one of his a piece of his antlers oh the tire really? off. yeah they didn't i cut thought they the had tire. to cut it no oh no that's so sad poor guy i know <laughs> well i feel bad it's a poor little baby uh so this happened in colorado yeah you know what else is in colorado what's that that's that's really awesome is cannabis Yes, Colorado is very cannabis uh, friendly. Yes, and it is one of our favorite things to do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially winding down after a long day. It does right. help. But for people who are interested, because they do know that it's starting to go green across some states, the investments jumped from 82% the second half of 2021 and 165% over 2020 levels. That's where we currently stand. So the, cannabis sales are on the rise. On the rise, through the roof. People, if you guys are looking at anything to invest in, I would recommend I doing some research. Say. There are companies out there, yes, that you can invest in. You just kind of kind of have to keep your eye open, watch the charts. Don't make dumb investments. Be smart. Don't follow the crowds. Do your research, folks. But I would totally recommend looking into that. Um, it's been something that people have been looking into earlier this year, definitely for sure. I know I have been, but that's pretty awesome. I'm I'm happy for that. I'm curious if there's a way to get in the stock game on something like this, because I feel yeah. like if you're going to get in the stock, but you can't just go and invest in weed. That's not a thing. <laughs> yes and no. There are companies that are actually on the stock markets that um, are based with with cannabis like you there i want to say there's like 10 maybe maybe more um on the new york stock exchange right now okay i could be wrong with how much that's when the last time i looked into it i just never knew like which one i wanted to like go into and i was already investing in other arrangements but it's definitely something that i totally want to look into i've always actually wanted to open a bakery that sold oh um edibles and oh, make it a dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But like I want it to be like a lounge cafe kind of deal where people can come in. I don't know what if dispensaries are like that around you, but when I was in Colorado and went to those dispensaries, they weren't like that at all. It was just like a regular like smoke shop. Right. Right. I know there's a dispensary near me that has like a little lounge area out like before you go in back into but that's how I think most of them are. Yeah. Uh, they just have like a little before room before you go <laughs> back into the goodie room. <laughs> probably but that's pretty cool i think there's a lot of uh potential in that it blows my mind that there are states out there that still have not legalized it and they're denying their state so much revenue yeah so much money that they could be making for their state mm -hmm. and i don't know hopefully that's uh that's changing i feel like it is don't you think? I feel like the... I think it is, especially with, like, where the country is at, with how much we're in debt and things like that. Like, they have to do something. They have to see the, the potential that this is going to be, like, have mm -hmm. an impact on our country financially. Like, it is what it is. Like, the numbers don't lie. They're right there in front of your face. You can't be that ignorant. I mean, come yeah. on. Come on. Stop I agree. <laughs> I agree. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no reason for it at this point i mean if alcohol is legal and i will die on this hill if alcohol is legal marijuana should be legal simple a hundred percent simple as a hundred percent you you will never change my mind on that uh if you want if you want 
marijuana to be illegal, then alcohol should also be illegal. Another hill I'll die on. Mm hmm. I agree Simple with you. That. I, I agree with you. <laughs> but, but, mm -hmm. I know someplace that you can't smoke. What? Where? Under water. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, underwater, <laughs> which brings us to our next segment the deep blue sea. We haven't talked about this for a couple weeks. We have not. I'm kind of excited about this. There's some some fun and interesting things that we've we've been discovering, especially me. There are some things that I haven't even looked into or even begin to understand. And I don't even know how I came up on this fact, but did you know that there are lakes and rivers underwater? Like literal lakes and rivers as if you were walking to Lake Michigan and looking at it right there, it's underwater. I'm going to need you to elaborate. <laughs> so apparently underwater, there are portions of the ocean that are more dense because of the salt, which allows the separation between the two. So it uh, makes it appear as if there is a lake underneath. It's just denser water. Okay. Kind of like kinda... oil and water. Like that's what it looks so like. So you think underwater. there's some like sharks down there just fishing? Oh, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. There's definitely creatures in there that we probably haven't even discovered. There's so much of the ocean that still has yet to be discovered. Well, so much of the world is, so much of the land world is <laughs> underwater, too, that's mm -hmm. been found. There's been mm -hmm. some crazy stuff. We were looking at some of this stuff earlier. There has been some wild stuff that's been found in the ocean. Yeah. Some unexplainable things as well. Very much so. Like cars, planes. Yeah. I can kind of understand some planes and stuff, and maybe right, some planes ships crash. Like, I can yeah. see cars. Sometimes cars end up in the ocean because of people but not using common sense. But of yeah, the, ocean, the only like, thing I can think of on that is the cars were being transported, right? Yeah. By ship, and the ship went down. That's about yeah. the only thing I can possibly think of. Yeah, it's still absurd and wild to me that there's things under there. Uh, there obviously the Titanic is still under there. I don't think they can remove it, can they? No, I don't think they even want to try. They're just going to leave it there and have it just become uh, a coral reef for all the. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, with the world that we live in, I'm surprised we haven't built a bubble around that thing and give tours <laughs> of the freaking thing. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of feel like they did a replica of that somewhere where you could actually go underwater and. Like go into Take one. Take a submarine I get where. down to it. <laughs> go into this pressurized bubble <laughs> and just tour the Titanic. <laughs> That's a trillion dollar idea right there for y'all. Somebody make it happen. <laughs> but somebody is gonna make that happen, and I'm gonna be gonna so make pissed. It happen. It's gonna, it'll happen now that I've put it out in the universe. It will happen. I mm -hmm. am obsessed with the ocean. I do love the ocean. I'm absolutely terrified of it, as we've discussed many, mm -hmm. many times. But I am obsessed with it. There's so much cool stuff. Anytime there's a movie that takes place on or under the ocean, I am. I'm there. I'm involved. I love it. Even if it's got sharks. I love sharks. I'm just terrified of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair. That's fair. Something that we found on here uh, that we were looking at that was underwater they found once was a freaking tank. Yeah. A war tank. How does that happen? <laughs> Probably the same thing. Ships out in the sea, they're going to war. They're trying to cross and didn't quite make it. I'm just curious to like, how long like the that tank has been there well this tank i'm looking at looks pretty corroded so i'm guessing a <laughs> while probably like around world war one times it's just like yeah, fascinating that's what me. it looks like it says they they estimate it's from world war one a tank that they found recently that's and awesome there was a big jesus statue you know the one that's on the mountain in uh oh Who's it Brazil? yeah what's what's the Chat, help me out here. What's the what's the Jesus statue that stands up on the well, where is that at? Anyway, 
for the people that aren't here to help me out. I know it's out. in Brazil. I just don't remember where in Brazil. Yeah. It might be. Yeah, I'm sure it's Brazil. Yeah, I just don't know the exact, like, city that it overlooks or whatever. But anyway, they found a statue like that under <laughs> under the ocean, like at the bottom of the ocean. A yeah. giant Jesus statue. Rio de Janeiro, I think. Thank you, uh, Joe. Joe in our chat let me know. Rio de Janeiro, I think, is the one I'm yeah, thinking Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. And it's, uh, it's, I think it's that big, too, like, because those are huge. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not that big. I'm looking at a photo here. It's not, not near as big, actually, but it's still, it's like, it's how does that get big. there? That's the ultimate question. Know. How does that get underwater? I don't in know. In the ocean. I question a lot of this stuff sometimes as to, like, why and how these things get to where they get to. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I know this. there's something we deal with on the land that I didn't think would be something that fish would ever have to deal with. <laughs> but there's such thing, such things as underwater volcanoes. Yes, yes, there are. That's how we this, create more land. It's I was about to say, is that how islands are formed? Pretty much, pretty much. It takes a long time because obviously everything has to like process and turn into rock and then that breaks up and then the winds carry like, you know, seeds from other places and yada, 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 pollination, all that good stuff. It takes a really, 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 really long time for things to process, but it is such a beautiful thing. I feel like I remember seeing something where there was like, um, leaves growing out of like volcanic ashes somewhere and it was just like really awesome it was like a documentary i watched a long time ago mm -hmm. but yeah they and you can actually tell like the the water gets extremely hot um at these at these points underwater they say i want to say it's like z negative something negative two degrees celsius is how cold it is and like okay. if you pass I over in one america of these... we go by fahrenheit <laughs> We I do couldn't tell you backwards from the rest of the world. <laughs> so I don't even know what that is. But... Listen, it is super cold down there. If you okay. go over it, it's super fucking hot. Okay. Think of like frozen uh, pizza rolls to like fresh out of like the microwave, like instant. I am eating pizza rolls directly after this. <laughs> no, now, because that sounds incredible. And I bought some today at the grocery <laughs> store. You're welcome. <laughs> That's my unhealthy snack for the day, along with the Taco Bell that I had earlier. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a, a real problem eating healthy. Let me tell you, I've been trying, and it's just, it's tough. It is tough. It is tough, because I'm an endless garbage disposal when it comes to food, and there's not much out there that fills me up, satisfies my hunger. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. But the chicken in the air fryer, it's doing a good job. It's doing a good job. One might even say, I'm addicted? I can see that. I know people are actually addicted to some food. I can see that. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that in this week's segment of Awkward Asylum. <laughs> it's really awkward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, addiction is our topic of the week on awkward asylum yeah addiction is real folks it is very real and before people get started and they're like oh well what's so awkward about addiction there are so many things that are awkward about addiction the first thing being is that most people don't realize that addiction doesn't stop at narcotics and alcohol mm -mm. and things like that addiction is in a lot of different things people can be addicted to food to exercise to um hydration addicted to children addicted to, to candies to places to things to love they can mm -hmm. be addicted to anything uh, coffee addictions chip addictions food addictions, like certain things sex sex addicts <laughs> i'm not gonna you know point your fingers on yeah, that one the but. thing about it is <laughs> listen we talk about real things here and this is a real thing. We're not making light of this, but it is awkward for people sometimes to talk about. And it's things that sometimes you need to talk about. Some things you need do. to be faced. And that's what we're here to do because Skylo and I will talk about awkward things with you folks uh, mm -hmm. and situations and, and topics that are maybe tough uh, for yeah. people to deal with. And 
this is one that I, I grew up in a town knowing people that struggled with this. Yeah. Uh, not only with, like you said, not only with narcotics, but with different things. Different, uh, different, like you said, foods, different hobbies, interests. There's people, mm -hmm. there, there's people addicted to everything. And sometimes, you know, I think people make light of it. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so addicted to this. But when you step back and look at things, sometimes mm -hmm. that's, that's true and it can be a problem and you not even know it. Mm -hmm. And you're affecting so many people without even realizing it. And people... Not only the people that you care about, but people who just happen to just pass by your life sometimes with the things that you do. You know, there's there's definitely victims in addiction as well. And it's a tough it's a tough thing to watch happen to somebody that you love and you care about, especially when it's a family member, especially when it's um, mm -hmm. somebody that's like a, a friend who's close to you. Like it's it's hard to have those talks and those conversations and try it. To help when you want to and there's also self-reflection there's people who don't realize what they're doing is an addiction and they don't want to get the help mm -hmm. um and they refuse to believe that what they have is a problem and it is hard to see that i know i myself was i have i've had many addictions <laughs> mm -hmm. in my life but you know ultimately being i i knew there was something that i was addicted to and i needed to stop and right. i knew it was causing me more self-harm and destructive behavior which there in fact trickle down to other addictions and other behaviors that were negatively impacting the people around me who i truly cared about mm -hmm. and it puts you in a dark place it truly truly does and it takes a lot of courage to be able to say like you know what no this is unhealthy what I'm doing is not healthy for not only the people around me, but for myself. And I think the first step that people tend to forget to, to do is to care about themselves. And I know that's why a lot of people are addicted to things, because they are lacking something. Mm -hmm. And that's how they tend to move on. But as as much as it it sucks to have to watch and go through and talk to, do what you can, but listen to the person who is dealing with it as well because you need to find underlying causes to why that's happening and that could be a trigger mm -hmm. that enables more of the addiction problem i've seen so many people just go through it within their families and i, th I think watching it watching other people suffer because of someone in their family or in their life that was addicted to something i think that's what helped me push through it and there's a difference folks and being addicted to something and just really liking something Correct. you have to you have to really pay attention to because there are there are such things as good addictions mm -hmm. the problem is people take them too far Correct. they don't know how to moderate things that they really like and then it becomes a negative impact on their life Correct. and that's where i think people struggle with kind of breaking out of the addiction that's where it turns from a a hobby or something that you really just enjoy to an, an addiction that yeah an obsession that is kind of taking over your life correct and and it's it's deciding it's you're deciding things around that addiction correct. Uh, with your life major things in your life and mm -hmm. that's when i think things can definitely become a problem again this does not this isn't limited to drugs, alcohol, uh, anything. This isn't limited to anything. Uh, mm -hmm. I know for a while I was addicted to working out. I was. I was addicted to exercise for a couple years. I mean, seven days a week, couple hours a day. And and it was obviously it was good for me. It was I was staying healthy physically and stuff, but mentally it was terrible for me because I eventually was like. If I missed a day at the gym, I hated myself. I absolutely hated myself. And I just, I was upset. It would literally ruin my day. When you get to the point where if you miss something once that you do all the time and you miss it once and that ruins your day, then it might be a problem. It might, might be something to, to have back. 
some self-reflection on take a step back and look because let me tell you nobody can help you unless you want to help yourself that's the one thing i've learned about addiction you cannot help anybody who doesn't want to get help you can lead a horse to water but you can't force him to drink exactly you know you gotta want it you can't hold yourself accountable for that you can't Mm -hmm. i've tried to to help people many times in life and some wanted it and some did great things and went on to change their life for the better and some didn't and it's just it's unfortunate but all we can do is be there let people know that you're there for them and Mm -hmm. that you care for them and as cliche as it sounds you want to help them and you want to be there and let them know i'll help any way i can but you have to you have to do this i can't do it for you yeah, and I think breaking that that wall of a lot of people feel like the best way to handle situations like this is just to be forceful and to to really push somebody. And I understand. I like I said, I I had friends who and family and things like that who went through some of the worst things I've ever seen people do because of addiction. Mm-hmm. But I also do realize that there are some people that are doing it because of lack of something in their life that is really hurting them and to approach it in an aggressive manner probably isn't going to be the right thing but telling somebody hey i understand what you're going through and you know i may not go through the same thing that you are but i'm here to help if you ever want to talk it's okay Mm -hmm. i feel like that is something that i say a lot to people is that it's okay you know it's going to be okay everything is fine this is fine this is fine because it's it's reassuring but it's also it's the truth. Once you let go of certain things in your life, things will be okay. But you just need to sometimes get that helping hand that's just like, hey, I need this. And if you're someone who, again, is, you know, a very prideful person or egotistical person like myself <laughs> and hates that other people know that you're going through things that you shouldn't be going through and what you feel in your mind because you feel like there's just such a stigma around it or that people will look at you differently or treat you differently when you don't want to be. There is help that you can go through anonymously. There are groups that you can go through. There's so many things. You just have to put yourself out there and and take that step forward and search for it and want it. You know, and if you know somebody who's suffering through something and you feel like they're not going to open up to you or anybody, and you really want to help, help them with the research. There are some things around town that you can, if you're local, say, hey, I found these sites. You know, take a look at them if you want to. But they're here for you. I'm here for you. And go on from there. It's just trying to get to that point of just helping. And the reason we put this under the awkward asylum segment is it may sound weird that we're like, oh, addiction is not awkward. It's horrible. There are awkward moments in addiction where people want to help somebody, but they don't know how to bring it up to them. Exactly. They don't know how to approach somebody. And that can be very awkward for people mm-hmm. to say, hey, I think you have a problem, mm-hmm. you know. So my advice on that, folks, and this is just speaking from my own personal experience of when I've I've noticed somebody that has an issue, a problem, an addiction and i am the very last person to ever pry into somebody's life you don't want to pry because all you're going to do is make that addiction even worse honestly so the best thing you want to do if you reach out to somebody is just reach out to them and say listen i've noticed this i've noticed you really are really into this if it becomes a problem please please reach out to me Mm -hmm. let them know that you're there for them they may not yeah. initially, they may even fight back on you. Oh, I don't have a problem initially. But you planted that little seed in their head that somebody mm-hmm. out there is there. Is they do there. care and they can talk to you. Mm-hmm. That, sometimes that's all it takes for somebody to hit a low point and be like, I really do have a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's just something don't necessarily let the awkwardness win in a situation like this is all I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty scary. There's a lot of ease, a lot of easily like ways to get addicted to things these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people have addictive personalities, mm-hmm. and just just really sometimes do that self reflection. 
folks. That's all we're saying. And I know this is a podcast where we have a lot of comedy here, but we also talk about the real things in life. And we appreciate each and every one of you all. And we don't want to see any of you struggle with anything. We want you guys to be enjoying life. We want to enjoy life with you and grow together as humans. And it's, yep. uh, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. Uh, that's, uh, that's about all we have for Awkward Asylum, unless there's anything else you want to say. Nope. Nope. Which that will then move us into something that we love to do every week here on this channel, mm -hmm. on this, uh, this podcast. We like to do the movie of the week. This every week, good. every week, Skylo or I pick a movie for the other person to watch that they haven't seen yet. We find a movie. This week was my week to pick the movie uh, that Sky hasn't watched. Well, I ended up picking a trilogy on accident. <laughs> it was an accident. Honestly, I, I, I wanted to watch the second movie of the trilogy. I wanted her to watch it. Because she hadn't seen it. Well, it turns out she hadn't seen the first one. And I thought everybody had seen it, you know. <laughs> but she hadn't. And we decided that she should just watch it from the first one. And she watched the first one. And she's like, okay, now I need to watch the second one. And she watched the second one. And then she's like, well, now I need to watch the third one. <laughs> so my movie turned into a trilogy and we started out with a movie that came out in the year 2000. Was it 2000 or 2001? I think it was 2000. 2000. That movie was Unbreakable. Starring Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willis. And if you don't know that movie, it's basically about a guy, Bruce Willis, who is unbreakable he can't get sick he doesn't get hurt he mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. super strength uh he's got all these things he can kind of see into the future when he makes contact with somebody uh what's happening with them in the future he can see if they're going to do something bad he basically becomes a vigilante uh mm -hmm. to stop these people well samuel L. jackson big comic book guy who is on the opposite end of the spectrum where he has bones basically made of glass and he can just bump into a wall and shatter his arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's obsessed with comic books, and he thinks that there's people that are superheroes. Comic books are basically stories from the past that have been fabricated into entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, and he basically tells Bruce Willis this, and they kind of fight back and forth on it and become enemies, pretty much, right? Is that safe to say? Frenemies. But yeah. Enemies, yeah, they're friends, yeah. but they're enemies at the same time. It's uh, like what'd a you Magneto. Think of it, Sky? it was awesome. It was awesome. Honestly, I I was shocked um, by the time it was all said and done. Uh, and I know after we watched Unbreakable, we watched Split. Uh, what's his name? James McAvoy. McAvoy. Oh my God. Um, I I have so many wonderful things to say about that man. The performance that he had in Split and the last one Glass was just was it was incredible. It mm -hmm. was incredible. I felt for him like th like the emotions I I didn't even tell you this because you ended up falling asleep because you started feeling that towards the last one. I I cried. I cried in the last movie. Wow. I did. I got emotional. I was so upset. I was hurt. I was heartbroken. It was I I literally felt this this movie and the twist, the turns and the story. It is just amazing. I don't want to give too much away. Like I, I so want to gush about so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> like I totally want to. Um it just and it also like just everything about the movie, um, which was I kind of feel like it had a lot to do with like the mind and how the mind works. And I'm somebody who's very, cause I know we only use like, what was it? Like 1% of the, of 1% of your mind, I believe. 10% of your 10 mind at a time. Something is that we, don't, is? we use our whole brain. We just only use like 10% at a yeah. time. I believe. I kind of feel like there has just been, there's just potential mm -hmm. like that could be unlocked 
in your head, in your brain. And I, oh, I'm, I'm huge with always telling people mind over matter, mind over matter, mind over matter. The things that your, your mind can do. And I feel like this movie pretty much like talked about that, all the incredible things that people could do just yeah. with their mind and how it affects your body and how it affects you as a person. It's, it's just, it makes you really truly think. And everything that this movie had like talked about are things that I, I, I truly do believe in sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not to that extreme, but in a sense, right. like I do believe, you like believe the things that, that they were saying. We are what we manifest, what we believe we are to Correct. an extent. Correct. To an extent. You know, it's, I'm not going to say like, oh, I'm going to manifest that I can fly and then jump off right. the fucking roof. Right. But like, there's certain things that, like mantras and chants and things like that, where you can actually set your mind to. If you By, set your mind fighting, to it, you fighting can do certain it. illnesses with your body. Correct. Uh, Correct. Just with your mind. Uh, Correct. It's just one getting of, there. One of the examples in the movie was a woman who had split personalities. Uh, she was blind, but one of her personalities actually started to develop sight because she believed that that personality wasn't blind. Mm -hmm. And her ocular, her ocular nerves started regenerating because yeah. of it. So that's just kind of an example of what we're talking about. I don't know how true it is. It's all a movie, but I could see <laughs> how it, it could possibly be something that maybe should be looked into. You never know. Yeah, it was really good. I'm glad movie. you enjoyed it, though, because, I mean, Unbreakable was was such a great movie for two thousand for the year 2000. Yeah. That's, that was an incredible movie. Then they, they came out with Split 16 years later, <laughs> which is the sequel. And Oh my god. And and to top it all off, the way um I'm just gonna call him M Knight because I can't say the last portion of his name without mm -hmm. wanting to say it. anyway. <laughs> the way that he did this was genius. And that's all I'm gonna say. How he broke up this movie in so long and what yeah. he did, like it was genius. like pay attention when you're they watching this movie. Stuff in in two thousand that they put in the two thousand and sixteen movie. Yeah, which like you had to have literally had this thought out. So I love people that can do that. Like I feel like that just makes the movie experience so much better. Yeah, is when you carry that story and that feel and that just everything. It's just incredible. I I loved it every every well, bit good. of it. I'm glad I picked a good movie, folks. <laughs> he How did. Do you feel he did. About it? <laughs> there were some scary it. moments in it though, and this is October. There were. There were. This is October, so you unfortunately you know what street we have to walk down again. <laughs> spooky Street. It's so spooky. Spooky Street is a segment we like. We've been doing all of October, and it's fun. We talk about why. First of all, how did October <laughs> become the spooky month? Do we know? Um, October was the. It's the harvest. It's the the fall harvest. Okay, what makes that spooky? Um, it's just stories, I guess, that that people have told, like at night, because things get darker. It's the the day of the dead. It's I know, like in other countries, it's the day that they they celebrate the passing on of like others, and then just people just fabricate things, and then there's like witch trials. I feel like. there's like so much history. I'm definitely gonna have, we'll put this on our our next segment when we okay. do spooky straight. We'll we'll That's look fair. up into it. I don't want to give too much away with like it's just it's just That's stuff. Fair. There's stuff. Uh, what are we talking about this this uh, episode of Spooky Street? We got uh, some haunted houses, which mm. are always fun. Yeah, but I don't also understand. not always fun. No. Okay, so remember when we were talking about the whole graveyard thing? Mm -hmm. Um, there was the 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 spirit whole thing, and me being able to feel that, like when I walk into a graveyard, and that's why I don't like graveyards. The same thing applies when it involves like asylums and in, in, in houses like I've been to the Amityville horror house like, I've been to that house I literally walked up to like the gate and the minute I walked to the gate I was like mm, nope turned the fuck around and we'll went in my ya. car and I was like see you guys my friends wanted to go in there I was like bye <laughs> like I'll be down the street don't call me just run and then screaming. you ran into Ryan Reynolds and it was a it was a whole oh it was a magical no <laughs> it was a whole thing it was, it was a whole experience <laughs> haunted houses have you ever been part of a haunted house like one of the no, performers in a haunted I'm house a, i would be really good at that i'm good at being like a, a, a scarer but like walking in as a victim not really not so much <laughs> i'm gonna i i have like my defense up i'm gonna hit you like not on purpose but just reflex yeah i love it 
being in a haunted house is one of the funnest experiences I've ever had. Especially if you have like one of those good roles that you get to scare, really <laughs> scare people. Mm -hmm. Because people, people are terrified in haunted houses. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much to scare people in a haunted house at all. No, it doesn't. Especially kids. Yeah, <laughs> they're my favorite because they really believe it's real. I shouldn't real. enjoy scaring the children as much as I do, but <laughs> it's, I mean, you, it's you fun. scare children every day, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> I throw up on them at Disney World. <laughs> terrifying. Um, it's yeah, it's a it's it's a terrifying world to be around me. <laughs> and uh, no, haunted houses are great. I've done a few. I've done quite a few of them, believe it or not. And as you know, me being in the acting industry, doing a lot of acting in my life, it's just another exercise for me to get to exercise my acting and, and practice pretty much. And it's so much fun. I think the funnest one I ever did was we did a like a haunted maze through the woods. Mm -hmm. And there was a, there was a guy with a chainsaw. And well, we had this we dug this hole in the ground mm -hmm. about, I don't know, not even a foot deep. And then we put a, a mattress in it and then we covered it with dirt, just loose dirt. And then when people walked, they thought they were like falling into this pit <laughs> for, a, for just a split second. Like they would just walk on and it was it just had it was just basically felt like the ground was like unstable. That and I would. It say. wasn't enough to like make people like we packed it enough to where like they people weren't going to hurt themselves. But yeah, it was so funny to watch people go through that because from where I was at, I was the next like attraction after that, and <laughs> I would see them coming from that. And every time there wasn't a person that walked through that that didn't freak out for a second. Something <laughs> as simple as that scared so many people. I mean, think about it though. Like, how many times have you fallen asleep, had a dream that you were falling, and then wake up and like right. go <gasps> like and catch yourself? Like, oh my god! It's, like, it's that, yeah, it's that rush of when you're leaning back in your chair and it starts to mm -hmm. go a little too far. It's that same feeling, <laughs> which I don't know why is a life threatening <laughs> feeling, but it is. I it hate is. that feeling. I do too. Ugh, have you ever been into like a, like a real haunted house though, like a real mm. an asylum, a prison, like yeah. one of those abandoned places? Yeah, I have, uh, and they're terrifying. I've never, I've never, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. What happened to you? Uh, scary stuff happened. It was, <laughs> and I, you know me, I'm a very logical thinking person yeah. when it comes to things like this. I, I very much try to find the logical explanation behind everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were some things that happened that I couldn't logically, I couldn't figure out. And it bothers me to this day that there were things that happened that I just couldn't figure out that, that I makes me want to go back. It makes me want to go back to these places and be like, what happened here? Do a whole investigation. You must be out your it. damn mind. Something has gone <laughs> crazy here. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but no, just just think the way things, certain things would move or certain noises would happen in spots and things that would happen in these, like it just things that you kind of see. Again, it could just be me being in that scared mindset of knowing this is supposed to be like a creepy haunted place. So yeah, every yeah. little thing in my mind is something creepy that shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. I think if I had to guess, I was just kind of playing a trick on my own, my own Could mind. Be. Cause again, your mind is the strongest part of your body. I truly believe so that. You've never been to one of those, huh? I refuse. You can't. No, you can't. I've been on around where I am. There's like those trails where you go to. And I've been through experiences of like driving through things. For example, uh, one was there's this windy road that goes by something. I, I feel like it's called like, the Trail of Tears by me. Um, and you put powder on your the hood of your car. So all of us did this when we were younger. Like we put the powder on your car. And they say that if you drove through this windy road at a certain time of night, you would see footprints and handprints of children on your car, little hands, because there was a thing where these kids had gotten murdered in these forests. 
and in the woods in that area. And I did that and I drove through it with a whole bunch of my friends thinking nothing of it. And there were little tiny handprints and footprints that went up my car, up to the back of my car. And that was the first and last time I ever did anything like that. And I will never do it. I, I feel like that's where my my fear of children, like Chucky dolls and things like that come from. I hate those things. I like in scary movies. That's why I could not watch Pet Cemetery the second time around. Like demonic children. No, thank you. I'm good. I don't I don't want that. I don't need it. I'm not. Nope. We're good. Maybe it was just like a little chimpanzee that ran across your car or something. While you're... There was nothing that there was no sound. There was no, nothing. Nothing. Went this on sounds top of my car. like a made up thing by Johnson Johnson Company to sell more <laughs> baby powder. Yeah, go cover your car in baby powder. Buy it all. Buy all It'll the be baby totally powder. Fine. And I was just like, I was mad at my friends because they were like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. So stupid. I'm like, well, you guys are paying for my car to get washed because this is bullshit. It was my 95 Monte Carlo. I love that fucking thing. And I remember going down and leaving. We we pulled out into like there was a school in the parking lot. And I was just like, this is going to be bullshit. Y'all going to wash my car. I went out. I looked at my car. <laughs> and I'm like, one of y'all are driving because I'm about to piss my pants and pass the fuck out. We need to go <laughs> right the fuck now. Are they attached? Where is where is the shaman? I need to like <laughs> exercise my car. It's going to be possessed. Yeah, that I don't car's got to go at that point, right? <laughs> it's just you're done. You can no longer drive yeah. that car anymore. And ever since then, bad things happen to that car is all I'm going to say. On 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 days like my birthday, on special days, bad things happen to that car. That's all I'm gonna say. That's fair. What else is eerie and spooky? Something that I've actually read on recently, which is something that I've looked into a long time ago, but past lives, especially in children. Again, children are fucking creepy. Um, I know I have a child, but they are fucking creepy. So there have been studies, and I've been I've been looking into this for like years on and off because it interests me of reports of children saying things that are just so bizarre and kind of outlandish that people are starting to believe that they have past lives. For example, there was a case where a child had talked about um, a murder that had happened and where she, that that per that kid was the murder victim and showed where he got hit with what he got hit with. And it was an unsolved murder. And the kid told his parents where he was buried and saying, I remember who did it, where it was, pointed at a picture of a person when, like, the police report and said, like, yeah, that's the person that killed me. And it was, it did turn out they went, found the body that they've been looking for for decades, found the body, the bag of bones with the murder weapon and linked it to that person. But that person had already passed away, so they couldn't. It was just, it ended up being a closed That's case after creepy. that. Yeah, and there's a lot of things like that. So, like, for me, it's like, I I feel like we have had past lives. And it's just, it's nuts to hear what certain people, like, think about it. And I don't know. I just, I feel like it's a thing. And I feel like once we get to a certain point in our lives, once we grow out of it, we tend to forget the memories that we used to have. Once back. we're taught doubt. yeah. Do you think that's what, honestly, because that's what they say. They say kids uh, see things and hear things that adults don't. And once they grow, as they grow up, they get told mm -hmm. that they don't, that it's not real. That it doesn't exist. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. exist. So they start building up this doubt in their mind and it clouds it and then they can't see it. Of course, exactly. that could all be a bunch of bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's a solid theory, I guess. If, if something like mm -hmm. that were to exist, I could see how that would be the the issue. Maybe. Yeah, there was so many different things. There was another one where a girl or yeah, a girl had told her mother, um, the reason why I'm here is because I saw you crying because you had lost my brother. And I'm so I came down to make sure that you weren't going to be sad anymore. And I saw how much you loved him. And I wanted to feel that same love, not knowing that her mom had uh, had to have an abortion very late in her pregnancy and lost a son oh man a potential son and this it was a little girl she was five years old telling this to her mother uh, no person in their in their right mind is going to say that to a five-year-old child like there's no way right, of her knowing right. things like that so like i don't know it's crazy to me it's crazy to me to see these things yeah when i was a little kid my mom and my grandma who who both since passed but they would always tell me that I constantly would see uh, my aunt who had passed away when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. 
as a little kid that before they even like told me who she was I, I, I she passed away when i was six months old and i knew so much about her before they ever even told me about her and as i grew up and i would always there were times i wouldn't let them change me i wouldn't let my mom change me because i can't i supposedly saw her in the room her name was Kim, and I, I would say, no, Kim Kim will see. And and I would always say that she was over in a rocking chair that we had. Turns out that was her rocking chair. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Later on. Uh, just different things like that. My, my mom and grandma, when I got older, told me that I would do all the time that literally freaked them out. Like, they thought I was some <laughs> kind of crazy <laughs> psycho kid. And maybe I was possessed or something. I don't know. But that's something know. else that's kind of crazy is possession. Do you think that's real? I don't know. I kind of feel like it can be. It's terrifying to think of not being in right mind. Mm -hmm. Even like inanimate objects being possessed like dolls. What is that one doll? That Annabelle. people always talk about the Annabelle. Yeah, I've never watched those movies either. But uh yeah, that I feel like that can happen. I saw again, I've saw footage of another doll in like somebody's store and that it was possessed and they had it they showed videos of it moving at night and things flying around in the room around it at night and mm. like poltergeist type stuff, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah like be a person being possessed i've heard stories and tales but i kind of feel like i've never really seen much documentation myself but i also mm. feel like my fear of that stuff like i i don't think i've really heavily looked into it because i feel like if i open that gateway it's just gonna like open up like an right. invitation to all these bad entities like and that's just how i am and i don't yeah. want that juju i'm not that's a juju i will not fuck with that's my limit hard hard limit yeah. right there that's a red that's zone for me so <laughs> i won't that's do fair. it i don't know i don't know i just is just weird possession is obviously if there is any kind of supernatural entities out there that are and like a human or demon nature Mm -hmm. uh that because again it's me i obviously i don't i don't believe in most things like that i <laughs> do however know one thing and that's that i don't know anything i don't truly know any of this stuff so uh looking at it from the standpoint of say it is real say possession is something that could happen what do you think would cause that what do you think would How do you think it happens? Like, do they just would they just pick a random person, or is it somebody you okay? They know what what are they trying so, to accomplish? There's so many questions. There are so from what I've gathered in my my whole my juju experience in my life <laughs> with Wiccans and Wiccanry <laughs> and all that stuff, um, is that there is there's people who want it. So they kind of have rituals to accept entities into coming into them and giving themselves up as a vessel to be possessed because of X, Y, and Z. Why? Because people don't see it as a, a negative thing. They don't see it as this thing is going to hurt me. They see it as what can I possibly gain, which is greed. And again, those people will always be punished. Where I go with black magic, black magic, you don't do things in, in 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 for self reasons because bad things will happen to you, and that's bad juju that comes into the universe. Mm -hmm. There are other cases where sometimes the entity is just too strong and is trying to lash out or needs to lash out or has unfinished business or something of the sort, so it it ends that's up always possessing the thing, somebody. Isn't it? Unfinished, unfinished business. business it's always a thing that's there's always, always something the, that's always the like the go-to of why mm -hmm. there's a demon or a ghost or and it's always unfinished business. Unfinished why business. couldn't it just be like ah, i wasn't ready i just wanted to hang out <laughs> and i feel like that kind of does happen too i feel like there's like the happy possessions of people of like 
like innocent souls. I just wanted to stick around and haunt a few people that I didn't yeah, like. Yeah, like oh you know? no, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I do know that there are people who do welcome the possession, and I kind of feel like it's just weird, weird yeah. to want, weird to want to have something to else their control as long your as they're body. Not harming anybody, more power to you. I say go I mean, get possessed. I mean, but if you're possessed, then you don't know if that's a possibility. That's true. That is so very true. That is something that you got to really think about, people. Like if you're out there, like. I need, I need the devil your body. To, like, <laughs> for real, like, come on, come on, stop yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's annoying. You know what else is annoying? Everything. There's a lot of things. Everything. Uh, yeah. I have so many things that bother me, and I'm excited to talk about it in our next segment called <laughs> Pet <laughs> Peeves, because let me tell you, <laughs> I have a bunch so many of them what's one for you sky i'll let you start it out here so i don't go off on a tangent <laughs> i think we both will on this one but what one thing that bugs me is people who aren't ready to order food okay it's when they get to like the window or the front of the line and they're just saying uh i'll have the uh you, no you know what what comes with the uh like mm, like me i'm i'm a stickler i have all the apps before if i <laughs> if i know i'm going somewhere i have a kid i don't got time for this shit right. if i if i know i'm going somewhere i'm like all right you want mcdonald's we're going to mcdonald's all right what's on their app what's on the deals what's on the menu anything new this is what we want somebody the order just in. get this the kid a happy meal <laughs> So it's just, it's in it's out like I'm I'm in and out. Nobody wants to wait and and there's always lines at places. Just fucking know what you want and just go in and get. If you don't know what you want, get step out of the line. fuck aside. Get yeah, out step of aside. Line. Get out of the fucking line. Let the other person behind you go. Say like, oh no, go ahead. I'm not, I'm still not ready yet. If just I'm the guy that will get <laughs> something that I don't even want just to keep the from holding up the line. <laughs> Yeah. I will. They'll be like, you want this and that? I, instead of saying, no, 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 I don't want that. I want to, I'm just like, yeah, sure. Take it. That's fine. Just let's go. Let's do just it. Let's, let's hurry this up. <laughs> get me out of this line. These people behind me are giving me anxiety and I need to go. <laughs> They're toe tapping at you, They're arms sitting folded. They're staring a huffing. hole through the back of my head. <laughs> Come and this on. This is why I'm growing my hair out <laughs> for extra protection. It's uh, it's an, it, no, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't like it when people are like that. Oh, that happens, just... or people that go through a drive through and they order the entire, How they order name? for like eight different people, and it's like, go inside. <laughs> You're obviously, it's going to take them a while to make this food. Go inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I have to do a big order, I love the places that, like, you can order ahead and then park and then they bring it to you. I do that. Like, mm -hmm. just, I'm going to park my little ass right here. Whenever you guys are done, I'm not in anybody's way. Just bring it to me and then I'm off to go. Off I go. Mm -hmm. People don't do that. No, People, they come don't. on. Use common sense. Something else Stop people it. don't do that really what? grinds my gears. <laughs> when they don't put stuff back. Oh my god, that fucking drives me crazy. Especially being a mom now. Oh my god. Oh yeah, my this is another never reason I couldn't have a child. Anything back every day. It's like, uh, where did you get that? Oh, I got it from over here. So why is it on the floor? Oh, I'll go put it back right now. And then I walk away, and I'm in the next room, and I'm like, why is this over here? Oh, I didn't put it away. Is that where it belongs? No, you know where it belongs. Yes, I do. Then put it the fuck away. <laughs> have you ever been to a gym? Oh my god, yes. I worked that one. Yeah, I did too. And let me tell you something. Re-racking is horrible. Mm, especially at night when you just want to go home. <laughs> and there's 45 pound weights still on the fucking bar left on the bench. Let me ask you people something. Let me ask every person out here that's been to a gym. that, And, and I'm talking to you specifically. If you're the person that doesn't put back the weights. Fuck you. If you're, <laughs> I have a question for you. <laughs> But fuck you. <laughs> Why are you going to the gym if you are too lazy to even put the weight back? It's a show. It's a show. They're doing it for fucking show. Oh, look, I, I pick stuff up. I put them down. Fuck you. <laughs> just... You're not. If you're not 
<laughs> if you're not able to put, what kind of workout are you giving yourself if you are too lazy to even put the weights back? It's literally not that hard. It's the easiest thing you can do. You got up and picked them up and brought them to where you were. Oh, now go and the people that, them. that grab like, and this is a, a subtopic, but the people that grab like four different weights yes! and just leave them around them while other people want to use them. You're like, oh, don't, you can't touch that. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm using doing, that. Oh, yeah, I'm using well, that. I'm you using can that. have it when you're using it because I see another weight in your hand. So I'm grabbing this. I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm that guy. I don't, I I've done that do when care. I worked at the gym. I, I When I was working at a gym as a personal trainer, I literally would walk around and anybody who had multiple weights next to them, I literally would break, uh, pick them up and then I would put them, I would put them away and they couldn't say anything to me because I worked there. Right. One girl actually did. She's like, oh, no, 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 no I'm sorry. I'm just going to use those like right after this. I'm like, well, then you can go right over there go and pick and them up or find, use, only find use a spot what you're closer. Using. Only use exactly. what you're using. I'm like, only there's grab. some, there's, Plenty of people out here who need this. There's plenty of weights around to go around. Like, stop it. Stop yeah. it. I don't Ugh. know. I don't know why people do that. People just... are, are people that, oh, you know something else? When people, <laughs> <laughs> when people, uh, like, at stores and stuff, a grocery store or something, mm -hmm. like, I'll find something or I'll be looking for something that I I need and they're they're out of it. But then uh -huh. I'll see it somewhere else that somebody just threw it like under the chicken or something. Oh my god! Yes. Why? Like, why? Uh, what are you doing? Put it why? back. Put it back. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I have to ask: Are you the type of person that puts away their cart? Oh yeah. Oh god. Me yeah. too. Oh, applause. Yeah. No. Anybody yeah. who doesn't is dead to me. <laughs> It's a must. I don't understand why people don't don't do it. It's just even when I had my kid and it was just it was hard for me to like, nope, I put him right in that cart and I carted his ass to the other carts mm -hmm. and then I shoved it in and then I took him out and then that was it. <laughs> we went back to the car. I yeah. just I don't understand. Just people just put things back. Stop being so lazy. Just stop being lazy. Just do it. Do it. Yeah. I think there's a there's a there's a problem with uh, laziness in this world. There really is. You know what else that people have a bad the uh, the problem with, which is another thing that annoys me because I'm a stickler for this. What's that? Time management. Oh yes. People having horrible time management, being late to things. Would you have? something that is at a certain time now i understand that there's some circumstance i'm not talking about those situations but for example i had to take public transportation to places when i used to have to work when um i no longer had a car don't go to the bus before like you have to go to work like you want to make sure that you're going to be there on time mm -hmm. and i can't stand people who get to work like super late and they're just like oh i'm just like rolling it for me, as a manager, you're on time if you're early. If you're on time, you're now, late. I've always disagreed with that. I've always, and you know me, mm -hmm. I am very, I'm a strickler about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I do show up early all the time. But mm -hmm. to me, you're on time when you're on time. For me, the reason why that's not true is because the places where I work, when people came into work on time, they would literally walk in the door at the time they're supposed to and then, clock right in and then they would sit at their desk and then they would sit there and drink their coffee and then eat their food and not start work well if that's then they're late that, that's exactly late. that's but not they being... would punch in like yeah, no, as if oh yeah i yeah, made no, it that doesn't count that doesn't count yeah mm -hmm. uh but if you're on time you're on time honestly being there early you're not paying me to be there early <laughs> you're paying Unless me for my time in. now if i can clock in early sure i'll be there mm -hmm. early but you're not paying me to be there early. You're paying me to check in at the time I'm supposed to check in and start working. As long as I do that, you cannot say a word to me. Simple <laughs> as that. That's how I've always felt. But also, I am the guy that I get there early anyway because I don't. I hate being late. Mm -hmm. I hate it when people make me wait when we were supposed to meet at a certain time or do something. That bothers me a lot, and I never want to be that person that makes other people wait. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's just like there's there's ways that things operate and yeah. especially in like the corporate world and thank god i left the corporate world uh but 
that's just how it worked. It, it It's just you had to make sure when you got to work and it was time for you to work, you were ready to work. And because mm-hmm. everybody just dilly dallies and doesn't get there and like gets there on time, it, you really weren't on time. Yeah. Wherever I went to, wherever you worked, you really, truly weren't on time because being on time to work. Now you have that extra 15 minutes where you're just sitting there yeah. dilly dallying before you get started to work. And it's just like, OK, you could have done that before. Right. If you got here a little bit early, if you knew you were going to be that person, if you knew that was that what you were going to do, then fine. If you're someone that shows up to work and you're on time and boom, you're like just like off to the races. OK, I right. can understand that. But let's be let's be honest here. Who actually does that when they, they roll into work? Right. We've Nobody. all been late. We know things happen. And mm-hmm. that's that's one thing. But people that are consistently and I know people that are consistently late and it's. It irks me. <laughs> it irks my, me so much. <laughs> the people are like, I'll be there in like 20 minutes. Yeah. Three hours later. Right, right. Uh, where, where, where were you? <laughs> like, we were waiting for you to go watch this movie or go play this game or go to this place. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Uh-huh. uh-huh. You know okay. what else? You know what that is? That's being passive aggressive for one. <laughs> and that's another one. Passive aggressive people are yeah. the worst. <laughs> I think we're all passive aggressive to an extent because a lot of people yeah. like to avoid confrontation. And that that's there's a, I feel like there's a difference in avoiding confrontation and being passive aggressive. Honestly, I feel like and I, you know what? I'm just women are definitely more passive aggressive, I feel like, than men. Because men well, yeah, can I think kind that's of... just a that's just a quality, a different quality between men and women. I think a, man, a lot yeah. of men there are a lot of passive aggressive men out there though, too. Yeah. Continue. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, that was pretty much my train of thought. Oh, okay. There are definitely a lot of women who are just passive aggressive, and I just feel like I don't know. Like it's it's so irritating, and I can totally see why it's so irritating, and that guys get so fed up with it. It's yeah. just, I don't know. I don't know. I am it's very just... much a person that uh, I avoid confrontation. I don't like it. It's pointless mm-hmm. to me because mm-hmm. people feel how they feel and that's it. There's no point sometimes in arguing with people about things that mm-hmm. that that don't matter. Things that just don't matter and people do that mm-hmm. all the time. And I personally I am I want to make the most out of my life and enjoy it as much as possible and have fun and laugh and have a good time with people. So mm-hmm. I do I definitely do avoid confrontation in the sense of it, to me it just feels like a waste of energy. And it yeah. just makes you it makes you bitter and it makes you angry all the time. I don't know. I just avoid that stuff. It affects and, everybody's mood around them, too. Yeah, for sure. And I so but I am also the type that if something is bothering me. And I, I, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to have the conversation. I'll just reach out to, to somebody and really genuinely try to talk to them with actual compassion about it. And be like, listen, I communicate. Oh, my gosh. Why can't people communicate? <laughs> Not that hard to just don't know how to talk. talk. People don't know how to talk to each other. It's a it's problem. crazy. You and I disagree on so many things. Mm-hmm. And we talk about it all the time. And we just listen to each other's sides without getting angry and saying mm-hmm. this and that and starting a conversation or being passive aggressive about it. You mm-hmm. know, the passive aggressiveness in this world is out of control. And I don't know, man, I've had I've had roommates that were passive aggressive. I've had friends that were super passive aggressive. Uh, I've even even had teachers that were passive aggressive. Oh, my God. The worst is when it's somebody that is supposed to be of, quote unquote, superiority of you. And right. they're passive. Like, it's just you sound like a child. Stop mm-hmm. it. Like You sound like just like a catty little brat. Just right. cut it the fuck out. Managers are, are are going behind workers' backs and mm-hmm. talking and and just oh my goodness that yeah, professionalism it, is is gone out the window at that yeah, point. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. And I kind of feel like that people who are passive aggressive are is another pet peeve of mine. Just people just don't let other people enjoy shit. Like yeah. they just they're just kind of like they they tie into that a little bit. And I, I, agree. I hate. That people do that, like, like just they they will casually just just crap on something that you like, yeah, for no reason. And it's like, okay, you don't have to like everything somebody likes. You don't have to have the same interest, mm-hmm. but don't shit on the person that's that's enjoying their fucking time. Right, I Go get this. Fuck the yourself. one thing I've gotten with this 
the one thing I've gotten with this the most in my life is I'm an avid uh, NASCAR fan, racing mm-hmm. fan. I grew up mm-hmm. in a racing family. I used to be a race car driver. I used to drive actual race cars. So I'm I'm all about the racing. It's been in my life since the day I was born. My first shirt was a racing t-shirt. Aww. Like it's <laughs> it's been my life, you know, and it's something mm-hmm. I've enjoyed. But anytime, even to this day in 2021, if I mention that I like NASCAR to somebody that's not in that world, it's just pure uh it's just pure eye rolls and Oh my God. Do you like watching people going in a circle? Isn't that boring? Yada, yada, yada. And it's just always just because they don't get it. Mm -hmm. I, they, they think I shouldn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And And even if they do get it. Yeah. Even if they do get it, they think, well, that's stupid. Well, you? May, maybe <laughs> maybe it is stupid to you, but to me, it's not. So let me enjoy it. Why do you want me to not enjoy it? Let people enjoy it. Whatever it is. If they're not hurting you or anybody mm-hmm. else, let them enjoy it. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I, that's all there is to that, really. There's so many people that don't <laughs> let people enjoy things in life. And we you just got to start is? being. You know what? Something my dad said to me. The other day, and it's it's stuck with me a lot was and it was something that I I talked to him about. I was, you know, because I talked to my dad. I'm very close to my dad and something that he said that I that I immediately thought would be a really good topic for the show. And this is a really good time to bring it up is people need to just start being nicer to people. Yeah. You know, people just need to be more kind. Yeah. And I think that needs to start being taught at a younger age maybe Mm -hmm. i think the that people are getting filled with hate and rage and anger at such a young age now yeah especially because of the internet i mean the internet is nothing but just trolls trolls that's all it is and memes and people feed off of that. And kids are super, they're absorbent. They take these things, they're like, their brains are sponges. Yeah. Like, for example, my kid right now, like, he'll start saying things that I know that my friends are currently saying when they're gaming or they're online. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you shouldn't be saying these things. Right. And the one thing that I, I do, I, I pride myself in, like, if there's anything about me that is a good mom, this is the thing that I pride mm-hmm. myself as a mother that I've taught my child is compassion. And we did that through animals because we have pets and Mm -hmm. I I taught him with nature and things like that. You know, even something as little as an ant, he will pick up the ant and he'll say, oh, you're so cute. Don't worry, I'll save you. And he'll Mm -hmm. take it outside and he'll let it go. Things like that. When he was in daycare, he gave up his chair for one of the teachers because the teacher didn't have a chair. Compassion for your fellow people. Like just, and he was like, three or four at the time like my kid has more common sense than most adults and it's just it's a compassion that people don't have to just let them do their thing let them enjoy it be nice to people i i i agree with your father yeah i I feel like the trolls and the internet and people just coming in for example like here when we stream you know i know there are toxic communities where people will just come in and be like oh hey asshole what's up you fuck face and it's just Mm -hmm. like all right, cool. Like, hey, what's up? And I know that there's friendly banner back and forth when you become friends with someone. But I feel but like when that's a... all that you have. That, exactly. That's all that you do. That's not a, that's... Every conversation all the time. Sometimes it's too much. And it, it gets it, to be a problem. Yeah. And I, as streamers, we are streamers on Twitch. We deal with a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's maybe easier for us to deal with it. But a lot of people aren't used to that kind of Correct. Just that kind of uh, trolling, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, especially in real that, life. Not only that, how it sets it sets a, a setting, a mood for people who are, are are looking into these things or coming into a chat for the first time or 
going into a community or visiting people out in the, in the real world when you're like with friends and then you're welcome a new friend and your friends are like all bickering at each other and right. calling each other like assholes oh, what's up bitch right. what's up bitch like okay <laughs> i get it but like i then... see so <laughs> much of that on twitch and it drives me nuts <laughs> and now you have like this new person that comes in and there's just like oh i want to be a part of the gang too what's up bitch and yeah. then they go home and they're like they, they go to their wife or their kids or their mom yo what's up bitch and they're like what are you calling me a bitch <laughs> fuck you okay. <laughs> I don't know that I've experienced that, but listen, it happens. It happens. And I feel like that people start to see like, oh, is that the norm now? Everybody wants to fit right. in. That's... Everybody wants to fit in. That's the problem. And they think that if this is the norm and this is the cool thing to do, that's what exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. People just stop calling each other bitches. Come on. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. It. Just, I, I think... feel just, just, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think that, uh, ultimately it's just we we got to start being nicer to each other we got to start letting people enjoy their lives if they're not hurting yeah. you just if you don't like it that's fine mm -hmm. just don't don't even comment on it and, yeah and don't even don't even interact with somebody if it's something that you think you're gonna get emotional about or something i i don't just let people live let people enjoy their lives for real. If they like something, who cares? Why does it bother you that they like it? Let them like it. Let and them like the what they like. Leave people alone who are talking on their headphones in public. If they're if they're just wearing headphones in public, leave oh them alone. Oh my god. Let yeah. them be. If you don't, don't have, have a if you don't have a need to talk to this person about something in that moment, leave them alone. Yep. Please, because let me tell you, there's a lot of people that have social anxiety and things like that, that 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 is a a comfort for them that helps them get through their day a little better. And some people just absolutely just don't want to talk to people sometimes. Mm -hmm. have you, everybody's been like that sometimes in their life where they just don't want to talk to anybody. They just want to be <laughs> left alone. Yep. And some more than others. But that bothers me i wear like i i was wearing my headphones to the grocery store today the, the reason i bring this up is i had my headphones in and i was listening to music and i was just you know kind of just in my zone while i was shopping and some dude came up to me and like started talking to me i couldn't hear a word he said and i took off my headphones and i'm like yeah can, what was that sorry i couldn't hear you and he was just like, they're really running out of the spaghetti over here. What are you doing? Why are you? Oh, my God. I don't work here. Why are you telling me? Go tell the person that works in the spaghetti aisle. Do you not see that I have headphones in? <laughs> I would be so pissed. I would be so pissed. Oh it's my just God, an annoyance to me. It's not even like, like that's just an annoyance. It's just a, we are talking pet peeves, guys. This is one of my <laughs> pet peeves. If you ever Honestly, see me no. in public, folks, and I have my earphones and my headphones in, just leave me alone. Same. You know what happened to me once, and I'm this is something I'm actually teaching my kid too. By the way, this that's a side note. But what happened to me once? So I'm somebody who always has headphones in wherever I go. I'm constantly listening to music. It's my escape. I I live in New York. I've been like surrounded by billions of freaking people. I'm in my own little bubble, listening to my music, focusing on what I need to do, and just in and out of wherever I fucking go. Somebody mm -hmm. had once. I was. I remember I was at a supermarket and I was trying to look for something and the person grabbed my earphone out of my ear and pulled it down to, to the tell hospital me they go to the hospital I, they go i literally freaked out on this person i didn't even hear what the hell they even had to ask me <laughs> I, I there was no conversation had it was what who the fuck are you right. <laughs> that was the only thing the person the looked at audacity. me audacity the audacity how dare you <laughs> you vile woman <laughs> and it was this lady just like stared at me she's like oh i'm so sorry i thought you were somebody i said i don't give a flying fuck who you thought i was <laughs> i could care less unless the fucking building's on fucking fire and you're right. like run i don't like what 
<laughs> why <laughs> she just turned around and just left didn't even finish the conversation i was in such a <laughs> shitty mood at that point i just dropped my basket i was like, i gotta get the fuck out of here oh my fucking god no uh-uh don't i no i <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just something to be aware of, folks. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people that have headphones in in public don't want to talk to people. I do it sometimes and not even be listening to anything. I'll just put them in. <laughs> I won't even li I won't be talking to anybody on the phone. I won't be listening to anything. I'll just have them in so people leave me alone. Same. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Have you, have you ever done where somebody like sees you and they try to wave at you to get, and you just point at your ears and you're like, no, and you like wave your little finger like, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't wave my finger at people He's because like, I'm not an no, no, 80 year old no. high school teacher. Uh, but um, can't hear you. Can you love? Yeah. No, I have done the the you point at my headphones like hey I, sorry i didn't can't mm -hmm. hear what you're saying mm -hmm. but uh yeah i think it works great for when you're walking into a store and the dare program is sitting there trying to get you to sign something <laughs> or do something works real good for that acting like you don't even hear them you just put it in just i can't tell you how many times if i didn't have my headphones that i've just acted like i was on the phone as i walked in <laughs> I do the just same so thing. Just leave me alone. And I'll say the most point. outlandish shit too. Like, what did you need? What anal cream on what? Okay, what oh, aisle no. is that? Do you get? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. You need the super super heavy tampon. Dial is taking okay. it to the next level, folks. <laughs> next I don't. Level. I don't like being approached in public. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I like my space. Unless there's a need for it, you know. Obviously, yeah. if there's a need for it, but if you don't, if it's something pointless, yeah, leave me alone. I'm Just not. Just don't talk to me. Like I'm, I'm busy. I got shit to, to do. Um, like there's a let, time to let be social. Let me be antisocial. Let yeah. me just let me enjoy being alone. Let me enjoy there shit. There is a time Remember and that place. Conversation. Let me enjoy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> there's a time and place for everything. There's right. a time and place for everything. That's no, not when I'm fucking shopping or speaking, going about my day. Speaking of time, mm -hmm. there was a time. Mm -hmm. It's very, very nostalgic for us. Mm -hmm. And that was the 90s. And -hmm. our segment back <laughs> to the 90s. Nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And there are some, th some things we come up with this week that I forgot about. Honestly. <laughs> I know. The first one was red rover these outdoor activities that we do what was it red rover red, red rover and... red rover send jimmy on jimmy over and over. jimmy would be 400 pounds and break <laughs> my arm not me i was like 90 pounds two feet tall running to like try to break the line and then getting clothesline and they're like just... get back up bitch <laughs> jesus what kind of friend did you have horrible Good ones lord we were aggressive as children apparently the 90s were a different time though i'll tell you that i was always it was always red rover red rover send jalopy on up you know because i was jalopy back then send jalopy <laughs> on over and because let me tell you i was like i said i hit puberty late i grew late i hit my growth spurt late i was tiny in school i was that <laughs> like you know there's always like that one kid in in your class that's just smaller than everybody yeah i was that kid me too <laughs> so i was always the one that they just would have send over like because they knew i wasn't going to break it they knew i wasn't going to break through it <laughs> like watch this watch this send but over, also send over. on the other side i was always the one they ran at because again <laughs> they knew they were gonna break through it <laughs> see that i was actually good at because i was so small i used the what is it the center my low center of gravity center to like gravity. really like buckle down like nobody could break through my wall i couldn't break through anybody else's wall growing right. up but definitely no one could pass what other me. games did you guys play as kids oh my god manhunt for hours until and hours now do you know what manhunt is i do not really okay so manhunt is awesome is it's it like kind of like and hide seek? and seek yes very much so like hide and seek but it's a little more extreme like you could literally use the whole neighborhood and you're hiding in places like trees, you're in, you're in bushes, and everybody in the neighborhood back then, this was a whole different time, 
everybody in their neighborhood knew us as kids. They knew that we could hide there and things like that. So they would actually um, allow us to go into their backyards and things like that, like when they knew we were playing. Oh, so, uh, I feel like I Your feel mic like that cut out or something there. I don't know what happened. That was weird. Oh, can you hear me now? No, I can hear you. It just okay. cut out completely. Oh, oh weird. <laughs> um, I remember just going into like my neighbor's yards and hiding, and I was small, so I was I was awesome at manhunt hiding. So it's in, hide like, and seek then. Pretty much, but how is it any different? <laughs> Because you're using a whole neighborhood opposed to like one small section of like a backyard. That's the way that we we put it. Like it and it would take all day. It would be one of those things where like you would have a group of friends, it would and it would be a group of people searching for the other group of people. It wouldn't be just like one person looking for everybody. So um and then there was there was the home base that would you would be safe at. Okay. It was like a whole, just so many different I don't know rules. That my friends ever played that. We just played giant games of hide and seek <laughs> around the neighborhood. But like a lot of my friends lived, I had probably 10 different friends that lived on the same block as me. And, and yeah. we were always hanging out, all of us riding bikes mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, doing hood rat stuff. <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, one of the games we did play was uh, flashlight tag. Did you ever play flashlight tag? Ooh, yes, but we we called it like freeze tag, but we just used the flashlight. And if you got flash, then you would have to freeze. Right, right. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, it's if you well, it, you didn't have to freeze for us. It was just if you got if somebody saw you with flashlight, you were you were out. You that was it. You were the you were the one <laughs> that was fun. it. You had to go. Uh, or it was, uh, again, sometimes we would do it like, like the, uh, uh, hide and seek where you were found if somebody's shined a flashlight on and we'd do it in the woods around the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. like, but we set like rules though, of like where you were allowed to like, how far you could go, you know, can't, you can't go past this street. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. We would keep it in the, and people cheated, people cheated <laughs> all the time. Uh, but people would climb in trees in people's yards. People would. It was fun. Uh, isn't it weird that I I highly doubt kids these days have any idea what something like that is like. Doing Got a him. doing a flashlight tag with their <laughs> friends outside that doesn't involve something with their phones or an app or a computer. They don't, and it's so worrisome i feel like my kid is just gonna miss out on so many different things because the kids don't play like they used to back in the day we used to like be out with freeze tag we used to do something else we called it dizzy dizzy devil but it would be basically freeze tag but when you got tagged and you were it you would have to spin 10 rotations and then try to catch the people mm, gotcha. so like you'd be super fucking dizzy while you're doing it and then just right take it from there we tortured ourselves as kids didn't we we totally did. We did in the nineties for sure. <laughs> we tortured ourselves as kids. We just had no, there were no limits to what we would there do, weren't. and it's crazy that we've survived as long as we have. Honestly, it really I think is. It made us better, though, right? I I, I want to say it's, so. It's I want to. It is, but uh, you know, one thing that that we should talk about uh, that you came up with here for this is curfews. Mm hmm. Did you have curfews? Uh, so it was weird. And I, I remember talking about this recently, I think with my best friend, um, that we used to have curfews when we when we shouldn't have had curfews and we didn't have curfews when we really should have had curfews. Right. <laughs> One of those things. But I do remember there was like a friend of mine and it was so funny. I'll never forget this because we would make fun of him every day. Every time at a certain point of the night when the, the street lights starting to come on, everybody would look over at his house. Because yeah, we all lived within the vicinity of each other. Like mm -hmm. my house directly behind my house was my, our friends next to them was my other friends. My best friend was across the street from that person down like through more streets was like the other. Like we all lived like together. Right. Um, for years. But I remember we would all see the lights start going on along the streets. And every single one of us would stop what we were doing and look over at this one dude's house. And if his porch light flickered three times, 
he needed to run his ass home before mm -hmm. that third flicker or he, we would be able to hear his ass getting whooped by his mm. mom because that was his curfew the minute those street lights went up he dropped whatever he was doing he's like i'm out <laughs> this <laughs> is just good. we'll see you <laughs> we knew but just like we'll see you tomorrow bye. <laughs> the rest so of funny. us like me and my brother we i want to say up until about high school uh we kind of were able to stay out pretty much all night but i feel like my parents were like once high school hit they were like no 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 they can't stay out longer than this because they're well, gonna be doing you, some yeah up that's shit. when you start having sex and doing all those exactly adult things as a kid exactly you know thinking you're grown <laughs> exactly when you're really uh, you're, you're really not, not. you're uh, not grown at all <laughs> but uh yeah that was as i'm seeing in the chat and this was this is was the same for me a lot of the time was my curfew was when the street lights came on when the street lights come on it was time to get home that meant mm -hmm. it was getting dark you got to get home when the street lights come on i'd have like a little uh little like leeway like yeah okay street lights are on you better get home in the next half hour you yeah. know yeah, yeah, yeah uh and then if i wasn't then then I'd get in trouble. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, it's so funny because I don't know. Do kids have curfews nowadays? Because parents can just like track where their kids are at on their phones and everything now. Honestly, I kind of feel like there there needs to be, you know, some sort of structure. I know with my kid, I'm I'm during the times that he's in school and stuff like that. I'm a stickler with being on a schedule with him. Like it's important that he goes to sleep at a certain time. He does things at a certain time because I want him to be used to a routine. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, when he gets a little bit older and he starts having friends and he's able to venture out and like hang out with his friends and I can trust him a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do think I want to implement a curfew with him. I would want him to be home for dinner and things like that and make sure he's going to settle down and wind down before he has to go on to his next day, especially like in the summer. In the summer, obviously, I always give him a little bit of leeway as to what time but... right because they don't have school the next day and stuff like that so it's exactly a little, a little different. i want him to enjoy it i'm not going to be like one of those you know parents that are just like too strict on things like <laughs> right this is like I, i'm moving i'm ebbing and flowing with the way of life mm -hmm. and i'm doing that with my child as it should be <laughs> so you know i don't know i feel like curfew should be a, a should be a thing for that no i agree particular i agree it's just yeah, like you said it builds structure a little structure. What else takes you back mm -hmm. to the nineties? Dial up. Do you remember dial, dial up? Sound effects brought to you by Skylo and Jolabi. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. We'll be here all week. I hope that brings up some wonderful memories of waiting to be connected and then getting disconnected just to reconnect again and having to hear that go. AOL, dial You couldn't up, use the phone. It. You couldn't use oh the phone God, while you I were know. on the internet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the fact that we had the phone is still <laughs> blows my mind. You burp, 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 burp. <laughs> it's like, get off the computer. No. <laughs> no, because then I gotta go and listen to that terrible noise again when I get back on and wait for forty five minutes. Oh my god. I kind of feel like if we played that that noise now, like so many kids would just start twitching. Well adults yeah. would just start adults twitching. Would twitch. The kids wouldn't have any idea what was happening. I'm like, what is this string sound? It's barbaric. <laughs> Crazy. Dial up was nuts. Could you imagine that happened to be a thing now? With no. streaming and things like no, that. No, I could not. I don't. I don't even know what I would do. We use the honest. internet so much that it'd be impossible. It'd be impossible. Like even imagine we had to use it on our phones. We had to dial up every time we wanted to get on the internet on our phones. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's something that uh, would probably make us not want to use the internet. We'd still use it. Yeah, we would. It would just take us so much longer. Honestly, ever since I've been to Fios and 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 been hooked up with that, I don't want to get anything ever again. Like this has just been. I'm afraid to move because I'm afraid that wherever I end up is not going to have Fios and I'm going to be miserable because the next move is going to be my move. I'm not moving again after that. I'm You're like too I'm much. retiring wherever I move to. <laughs> like that's just I'm it. never doing it again. <laughs> up until my kid goes to college and gets the hell out of my house. <laughs> moving is the worst and i do it so often i know i do it so horrible. often and it's terrible but uh it's part of life i guess uh 
What else? Were there any cartoons that you liked from the 90s? Because there were so many for oh. me. Many. You know what it is about the cartoons from back then? As I feel like the cartoons back then had a different level. I feel like the kids just knew not to do the dumb shit that they saw on fucking cartoons. Because I used to love like old school cartoons where there weren't even any words. Mm -hmm. Like Tom and Jerry's were kids, like they were just beating each other up or the old yeah. black and white cartoons and the old school color cartoons and uh, Ren and Stimpy, Invader Zim. Uh, did, have you ever seen that show called Two Stupid Dogs? Uh, no, but I live with a couple. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> that are quite entertaining, to say the least. <laughs> no, but seriously, so Two Stupid Dogs was on Cartoon Network very late at night. I remember being like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, just sitting up at night when I shouldn't have been watching these cartoons because they were cartoons <laughs> that you shouldn't be watching at night as a little child. And here, I, it, it explains so much of why I'm so demented. But <laughs> I used to love that show. And not, no, not a lot of people actually know that show. It was one of my favorites. Two Stupid Dogs. I was a big uh, uh, Pinky and the Brain fan. Oh my god, yes. Pinky and the brain. They're totally insane. Oh my what? gosh. Narf. <laughs> Narf. I think I want to change my streaming name on Twitch to Narf. Honestly. Narf. <laughs> yeah. But, I will die if somebody has that already. Yeah. Name. Oh, I'm sure they do. If not, they will now. Uh yeah, I think uh Pinky and the Brain, Hey Arnold, Rocket Power. Oh yeah. Doug. Those Angry were Beavers, great. Rugrats. Angry Beaver Rugrats was amazing. My dad also drove race cars, as we spoke about earlier. Uh, he, he drove them as well, and he actually did a, a scheme one year on his car that was uh, it was called the Rugrat Racer, and he actually had pictures <laughs> of the Rugrats like playing on his car. Please tell and me he had Reptar on it. I. Think so, maybe? I can't remember oh, exactly. I need, I, was, I, I need was, a picture. I'll have to see if we can find a picture of it. But I need a picture. During the kind of the meet and greets where they would pull out and, and like sign autographs for fans and stuff like that, mm -hmm. Dad's car was the biggest attraction for all the kids. They absolutely loved the Rugrat Racer. And that was just that was a great show growing up as a kid. The Rugrats were like they were my jam. <laughs> Same. I was probably too old to even be watching them, and I still, I still love the Rugrats. I feel like that's one of the shows. Like those cartoons, I feel like were some of the cartoons that I've watched from beginning to end. Especially, so Nickelodeon had these great shows like that, right? But I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of people don't remember a lot of the Cartoon Network shows that were just like so outlandish, like Cow and Chicken. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the other one? There was Samurai Jack, Dexter's Laboratory, uh, Powerpuff Girls. Seen any of those that you just mentioned? That's what I mean. And there were so many that were just so out there that was just like, why am I watching this? What is happening? Johnny Bravo, like, yeah. like all these different shows. Uh, Cat Dog, I think that was uh, Cat Dog Nickelodeon. Was one that I saw, yeah. Yeah, I used you to love that. You know what, though? Show. We learned so much as kids. Like, watching the Rugrats, I learned that Angelica was a bully. And, she was. And I didn't want to be like her. I learned that I didn't. I was more like Tommy and, and work together with the team, with my homies. <laughs> you know, like that, sh that show shaped me as a kid. I was Phil and Lil. And I don't watch shows anymore like that, <laughs> kids, like cartoons. But I don't know. Do they do that? Now, you have a kid. Do they do those kind of shows <sighs> where they're act, Or is it just the basic Dora the Explorer teaching? Mm, so they still have like those like the door and the door of the explorer type shows but i feel like it just it stops at a certain age and then it goes to these shows that are very they sometimes kind of teach but they don't so like there's like a section of of shows mm -hmm. i feel like from ages like six to like 10 where it's just just dumb shows my kid is watching some show called loud house i think and it has some of the most ridiculous things that are happening in it, where it's just, they're mean. This mm -hmm. is fucking trolly internet memes and people yeet and all this other stuff. And my kid says it all the time now. And I'm just like, you need to stop. You oh, need to no. stop. He's you need to stop. The yeet. He's saying the yeet. And it's oh, like every little no. thing. And I'm just like, you're going to end up eating yourself and hurting yourself. And then I'm just going to say, well, you had to <laughs> oh, yeet, didn't no. you? <laughs> it's going to be one of those things. It's but yeah, terrible. so like, they have really, really like just ridiculous shows that i'm just like i'm trying to push him back into 
like the better shows that kind of teach them a little bit about life and things mm-hmm. like that that have a little bit of substance in it just a little bit like it's totally fine if you want to watch these things but don't don't be one of those kids that think that what you're seeing is actually a thing and now something <laughs> you brought up to me that i don't know if it was a show but it was definitely books was because I, I and i didn't have this wasn't like part of my life i knew about it but i didn't Mm-hmm. I never really experienced it as a kid, and it was Goosebumps, right? Mm-hmm. Now, they was did that, have a was show. Was there a show? Because I thought there, there was. There was a show. Uh, not very – I don't remember if it was – if they did a lot of it. Because I tend to mix the show up with Are You Afraid of the Dark. Okay. I tend to mix the, the two up a lot when I'm reminiscing. But I really do feel like there was a short um, show with Goosebumps in it. And I do remember – the one that I remember the most is the the one with the uh, the, vitri- the 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 ventriloquist doll, doll, right? Yes, and I remember that one because That's again, the only I have thing a I know fear. about goosebumps is the <laughs> ventriloquist doll. That's it. I have a fear of those things. Like those things scare me. I just ugh, they just freak me yeah, out. They're I don't like it. They're creepy. They're so fucking creepy. I just remember reading goosebumps, and there was a couple of them. I don't know if this was all of them that you can change the ending to the story, and it allowed you to choose like. If you want to do this, go to this page. If you want to do this, go to that page. And you could flip over to that page, and then you made the story as you went, which was really fucking awesome for a book um, to do that. Mm -hmm. Because most of the things were stories. They were just, that was it. Which gave it, you could go back and reread it. And then, exactly. And you could change all of it. So I thought that was really cool as a book. And a lot of people haven't really got into those books i we used to have a collection well, because they have that stuff in video games now interactive they do. video games where you can the storyline changes as you based on what you choose and things they like do. that i'm i'm honestly i'm a whole i'm a whole stickler for books i love books mm-hmm. i would love my own library there's nothing in comparison to the feel of a book in your hands like a good right. book that you I, can actually I refuse read. to read a book from a tablet or anything like that yeah, I do enjoy I tr- reading. I haven't got to at all lately, but when I do, it has to be a book. Yeah, same. an actual I tried physical recently. book. I've tried I, the the tablet thing, the iPad, mm-hmm. or it's just I can't do it. I feel like I'm reading like an assignment, doing homework or something. Yeah, I, I like know. you're doing research. And yeah. I tried recent, like really recently, like a couple of days ago, actually, because I was going through my Amazon Prime stuff that I was able to get, and there was. There was a thing that we can get like books from Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. like the and it came with the Prime. And I was like, well, why am I not utilizing this? I love to read, so might as well just see what other things that I could totally read. And as I'm going through it, I was just I couldn't do it. I got I even got books like Harry Potter where I'm just like, okay, I'm definitely gonna read this. <laughs> I know I love this series. I'm gonna fucking read it. And I got like to like page two of the Sorcerer's Stone, and I was like, I I can't do this on this phone. I can't just I. Either read it to me in an audio form or just give me the book. I can't. Do it. I have I a really can't. good friend from college. Uh, she has read the Harry Potter books at least four and a half million times, I believe. <laughs> she absolutely loves them. I could never do it after watching the movie, though. If I watch a movie first, I'm not going to want to read the book. I'm just not going it's to. It's going to mess it up for you. I'm mess it all up because I'm going to be seeing the actors instead of i see, I do like to to enjoy the book before the movie i do too too but i can also do the opposite because then it kind of like it helps me see like okay what did i visualize and then what did this person who also read the book also is visualizing right and then when i reread the story i can now visualize it right. in more depth but so i kind of feel like it if helps. you're the type of person that says the book is better you can go lay down <laughs> go lay down <laughs> In the dirt somewhere. <laughs> okay? Okay? Stop even everyone comparing them. Everyone knows. Not, stop Every... comparing them. Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone knows the books are always the better. The books are it's... always way more in depth. Yeah. They've got way more information. Yeah. Of course they're going to be better. they got to take yeah. these books and put them into live action in two hours worth of time. Mm-hmm. Or what do you expect from shows. these people? Mm-hmm. Stop it. We know the books are better. Stop! My, just enjoy the my movie. My favorite, my absolute favorite, favorite is when people say, "Oh, well, this was in the story, and they didn't add that to the movie no, over the they show." They left out like, a key point here. Yeah, oh, they're doing right. like 
it's art like these people are are showing it in their perspective like just right. enjoy it again let people, people. enjoy their shit <laughs> that's the theme <laughs> of episode seven everybody is just let people enjoy their life okay jesus fucking christ <laughs> oh my goodness well let me tell you then because that really that really puts us on to the the, the best way to end the show that really actually transfers over to our hypothetical question for the week hypothetical (laughs) questions is the way we like to end this show every week where we ask each other or we just ask a hypothetical question and we give you our thoughts on it this week's hypothetical question is very very interesting if everyone spoke their mind would the world be a better place so I came up with this question because mm-hmm. I I was having a problem with it. I was actually having a conversation with my kid and we were talking about telling the truth to each other because he's my son and I don't want him to ever feel like he has to lie mm-hmm. about anything. And I said, when you were speaking to me, you know, I want you to speak your mind. I want you to always be honest with me and be true to who you are because that means a lot. And It'll help him when he gets older and things like that. It would help. However, I do feel like there's certain things that he says to certain people where I'm just like, you you should not say that out mm-hmm. loud. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it, it could be offensive or hurt somebody. So, yes, I feel like people need to speak their mind, but they have to use common sense when doing so and not speak their mind in a way that is harmful to another person person Mm -hmm. in my opinion i don't know this question reminds me of a movie that has ricky gervais in it it's called the invention of lying and i feel like i've not it's so funny because they over exaggerate it but it's you it's people can't lie based people Mm -hmm. this is before people knew that you could lie so they're just constantly Mm -hmm. telling the truth so Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the movie he's on a date and and he says, are you enjoying yourself? And she's like, no, not really. You're pretty boring and kind of short. <laughs> and just very brutally honest with <laughs> it and stuff, you know. So in that aspect, I mean, it could be good because ultimately you're not wasting anybody's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, like chat, several people in chat have said, we'd all be killing each other. We would all we hate each would. other. And we there would be no like civilized people because it would just be people being mad at each other and everybody would become a hermit, I think. But like, okay, so how about this? Like, what if like since the beginning of fucking time, no one actually ever did tell a lie and everyone spoke their mind? I kind of feel like it would it would take a lot of pressure off because people would be okay with the truth at that point. They wouldn't see it as a malicious thing. And I think that's the problem is that when people speak their mind to another person, it's all about how you deliver this information because you could say something like, for example, like someone who you know that you care about who is um, gaining some weight and you feel like they're just, it's a little unhealthy that the way that they're doing it, you know, like they're eating really bad food for them. You can say, hey, you know, I've noticed that, you know, you've been eating a little unhealthily recently and it's starting to show and I can, I just want to make sure you're okay. Or, you know, bring it up that way, not bring, hey, you know, I think you're fucking fat. Okay, here's my take. (laughs) Here's my take and here's all I'll say about this. Mm -hmm. I think if this would have been implemented at the beginning of humanity, Mm -hmm. it would be okay. Yeah, I agree. I think the world would be a better place now. I agree. If we were to implement this now in the world we live in today, no, it would be death and destruction. Mm -hmm. I agree. Is that fair? That's fair, right? I think. I agree. I think nowadays you're better off to just leave things alone, let things be. You don't have to butt into people's lives, and I think we're better off. I know there's times you want to speak your mind, and there's times you should speak your mind. Mm-hmm. But there's also times you just let it go. If there's one thing I learned from Elsa, it's let it go. <laughs> Pick your battles, folks. Pick, Pick your, your battles. battles. Read the room. Folks, <laughs> it's been an amazing show, guys. We're, we're Episode 7 in the books. 
We did it! We're, We're almost here. at the double digits. Let's go! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I know we're shocked every week, but it's just it's incredible. Uh, you guys in the chat, the live chat, have been incredible. You, it hasn't stopped moving this entire time. We appreciate everybody being here, everybody chatting along with us, having a good time, enjoying yourselves. We, we do read the chat, guys. So we don't do think chat. that don't think your messages go missed. We actually do read the chat when we rewatch to get like the TikToks and all of the other mm -hmm. stuff. And we love your comments. So Absolutely. again, if you're listening on a podcast, you're watching on the YouTube, or you're on a TikTok, leave a comment because we love to see what you guys say. You guys are literally, you guys are hysterical, first of all. And let us know you guys what have you, awesome experience. Let us know what you want us to talk about. I know yeah. we say this every week, but please reach out to us anywhere, any of our social media, anywhere you can find us. Please go comment on our YouTube uh, videos. Anything you want, please leave comments let us know hey i'd love to hear your take on this or i'd love to hear you guys discuss that give us anything you can and and who knows it may make it on the show because we want to bring common sense to all aspects of life mm -hmm, uh, sky mm -hmm. is there anything else to put out there in the world uh, i'm so sad that this is over again <laughs> i look forward to this every single week but no thank you guys i'm just like i'm i'm just i'm grateful for yeah. all of you guys for allowing us to continue to do this every week uh it, everything has been growing incredibly it's just been amazing um i'm so glad that there's so many people that have reached out to us and have told us how much like mm -hmm. we've, we've made a difference or they love our conversations or things that they were afraid to talk about before and we kind of gave them a little bit of a light to be able to shine on that which is an amazing feeling so mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. So I much. have to big, give a big shout out to our sponsors. Much appreciated. We've got some new ones on board this week. They've been uh, right here on the screen for the live uh, viewing the entire time. And if anybody is interested in getting in on that on the ground floor here at Not So Common Sense, please reach out to us about that as well. Uh, next week, we're going to finally get to some conspiracies, maybe, you think? <laughs> I uh, hope so. We're also going to talk about space and so much more. What a show. Thank you guys so much for being here. You guys make it awesome. And I can't I can't leave the show. I can't end the show without getting a little plug in for us real quick, though. We are officially now on Apple Podcast, and you can leave us a a review on there hopefully five stars means a lot to us if you're in the live chat you can see the link right there if not just go to apple podcast look us up you can leave a review right there on right on your phone uh it really means a lot to us helps us out a lot if you want to see this podcast succeed and continue please take a second help us out and uh we'll be back next week Next Thursday, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash jalopy. Until next time, guys, one thing to always remember. Read, read the, the room. room.